Hello everyone, welcome to Know Your Place Worcester. I'm going to give you a brief tour around the site and give you a bit of an idea of the resources that are available. To access the platform, go to kypworcester.org.uk and you'll come to the homepage here. On the left hand side, you can click through to get further information on how to use Know Your Place, including an instructional video. But on the right hand side, you can go straight through to our map browser. As you can see, it's a little bit like a Google map and it functions in a similar way. So you can click and drag around the map to navigate, like so. Or you can use the zoom functions on the left hand side of the screen. So you can zoom right in to get further information or further detail and zoom out. Alternatively, you can search for an address. So I'm going to look at High Street and it will centre the map on that particular address that you've looked for. You can also see that we've got this central bar that you can draw across the map to reveal the historic map compared with the modern map. So in this instance, we've got the 1940 Ordnance Survey map overlaid on the modern map. If we go to the base maps, you can see that there are a selection of photos that uh, sorry, maps that you can include there. And over time, we'll be adding more and more maps to this section of the site. To go back to the information layers, you can see here we've got our community layer switched on. So that's our green diamonds, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. I'm going to switch on the historic environment record monument points. So all those little red dots that have appeared there are records from the Historic Environment Record, uh, which is the database of all known archaeological sites and historic buildings for the city of Worcester. If I click on one of those, that will give me further information about that particular site. In this instance, the Medieval Guildhall. And if I click on that right arrow, you can read even more information about that. And again, Clicking on the More Info button will take us through to Heritage Gateway, which gives the full summary of that record, a full description and sources for further reading. In more recent times, we have our historic photograph collection, and this collection has been worked on by volunteers from the Changing Face of Worcester project at Tudor House Museum. They've put in hundreds of dedicated hours to describing the photos and adding them to the site. Here's an example of one of them. So this is Sparks Music Shop and Good Value Stores at 11 and 12 High Street in 1951. And this is just one example of around 35 to 40,000 photographs that we have in our collection. Over time, more and more of those will be added to the site and we hope to, to be doing that shortly. So if you're looking for photos from your street, for instance, do keep coming back and looking because over time those will be added. Going back to the community layer, I'm just going to zoom up to Corn Market to show you a really lovely example of a photo that a local lady contributed. So if I click on that green diamond there by the public hall in Corn Market, you can see that this lovely photograph from the early 20th century has been added. And this is a photo from her own family's collection. The family were involved with Shooter and Flay's uh, family grocers. And this is just a photo from the album. So you can see on the left hand side there is the Royal Exchange pub, which is still standing. And then on the right hand side, the public hall, which was sadly lost in the 1960s. So that's just one example of a contribution made by a local person to the community layer. I'm just going to give you a bit of a demonstration now of how you can very quickly and easily add your own material to the website. And that doesn't have to be a photograph. It can be a photo or it can be a written description. It can even be an audio file, file or a video. Uh, so if you had recorded your memories or the memories of someone else, you could upload those as a file to the site and share that with other people. So to use the community layer, you just go to the right of the screen 
And if I hover over that pen tool there, you can see it says create a new record. Just going to get rid of that first and click on create a new record. You then use that tool to click on the area of the map where you want to add that record. And I've got a photo from the 1970s that I want to add of Randwick Drive in the Warnden area. So it's going to centre on that site now. You can see in 1940, we're in the area of farmland in Aswood Farm. And today we're in the middle of the 1960s housing. So there we are, there's Randwick Drive. I want to add my record just here. And it prompts me to create a new record. It then comes up with this very simple form. And if I hover over those boxes there, it will give me a description of what it expects me to put in there. So in this instance, I'm adding a photograph of children playing in the street. Randwick Drive. It's a photo. And then I can add a little bit more description in there if I want. So photo taken in 1973 by my dad. You can populate all these other fields if you choose to. You can talk about the condition of the object. If you're doing this work as part of an organisation, you can add that in there. But most importantly, you need to say that you have permission to add this material. So I'm just going to say yes there. Um, we also ask whether you'd be prepared to share your contact details with us in case we have a question about the material. Um, so I'm going to say yes again there. And then the option to populate your, your information. So I'm Joe Bloggs today uh, and your contact details in there. Uh, down at the bottom of the form, you can uh, link to a web URL if you want to. But I'm going to add a, an image file. There we are, and just to show you the image that I'm adding. There we are, some children playing football in the street in Randwick Drive. You've got Tetbury Drive in the background there in about 1973. So I've done all that. All I need to do now is click the submit button. And it will tell me that my contribution will be added to the community layer within 15 working days. And that just allows uh, me to go in and validate that um, just to make sure that it's appropriate material for the site. And there we go. So in a few days time, a little point will appear on the map here. You'll be able to click on that and your contribution will appear. And as I said, that can be a photo, a text document, an audio file or a video. Um, it just has to relate to some part of the city and be able to be located on the map. So that's just a very brief whistle stop tour of Know Your Place Worcester. If you need any further information, have a look on our homepage, have a look at how to use Know Your Place and the video there. You can also have a look at our blog. At the top of the page there is the link to our blog pages and you'll see different examples on there of information that local people have added to the site and some of the resources you can access. You can also contact us from the, the web page. There's a short contact form there, but do get in touch and keep on exploring. It's really those local contributions from local people and your knowledge of Worcester that will make this site so valuable into the future and enable it to keep on growing and becoming more relevant to lots and lots of people. Thank you very much.